the key dimension for the coupling rods is the distance between the respective wheel centers. If they're not aligned, when fitted, the whole lot will jam very quickly. And although I've been building against my interpretation of Don's drawings, it is likely that the distances between the wheel centers will not be exactly as specified. For me, that should be 149 millimeters, but to be sure, I'm gonna check for each coupling rod. To measure, I'll be using my large calipers and I'll be going across the outsides of each axle pair. So of course I will need to subtract one axle diameter, 16 millimeters in my case, from the measured reading to get the center to center dimension. Remarkably, I do seem to be coming in on spec for this first pair. So I've got 165 mil across the outsides, which equates to 149 millimeters. For stock, I'm using some 30 by 12 bright mild steel bar. I've machined off one end of one of those pieces and I've got both clamped into the machine vise and I'm using the edge finder to get my datum point which would be the rear right hand corner in this instance. With this setup all the operations I now do in the milling machine will be taken with respect to that datum point, the rear right hand corner. And as we can see in the drawing here I'm using the CAD package to determine the offsets required. The first hole that I'm drilling and reaming here will be for the leading wheel crank pins. And of course it's more of the same for the driving crank pin holes. And also for the knuckle joint for the rear coupling rod. Although I drill and ream the latter to 9mm. Continuing with the same setup in the mill, I now drill a series of 6mm diameter holes around the profile of the rounded sections of the coupling rods. This is another advantage of transferring the drawings into CAD, as it's a relatively simple exercise for me to determine the centres for those holes. The outcome of all this is that my stock now looks like a piece of Swiss cheese but I can now remove it from the vise and get on with the next operations. So far I've been working purely with the DRO, but I'm at the point now where I do need to mark out the outline to enable me to carry on with the machining operations, particularly when it comes to machining the rounded sections, as I do this by eye. But before I get back onto the milling machine, there's some good old hard graft required to remove as much of the excess material as possible. Back in the mill, the first job is to use a wiggler to align to one of those scribe lines. To start with, I go over the top of the main section. Once aligned to the x-axis, I use an end mill and bring that surface down to the line. As with most of the cuts I do in the milling machine, I do this over multiple shadow cuts. To machine the other side of the coupling rod, I can now use a dial gauge to position it correctly on the table. However, it should be noted that the coupling rod is now starting to bow ever so slightly, which is no surprise given the amount of material they've taken off. I strongly suspect that by the time I finish machining the rod, it's going to need a bit of gentle coercion to straighten out. After completing the same on the other rod, it's time to move on to the rotary table to do the rounded sections. For the rounded sections, I follow the same approach as I did for the return cranks which is covered in part 10 of this video series, so I'm not going to go over it again. The only thing to note with the front coupling rods is that there are three sections that need to be rounded, obviously both ends and the section for the driving crank pin. The next job is to machine the profile of the coupling rods as looked from a plan perspective. So I need to remove quite a bit of material from both the inside and outside of both rods. First off I take the same approach as I did for the return crank by making a little jig and using a long end mill with shallow cuts. Because of the way the rod is fixed the jig I need to do this in two parts. First as much as the rod as I can do between the two clamping points and once that is down to dimension I move the clamping bolt at this end and use a vise clamp to secure the rod so I can now get the end mill to machine this end of the rod. However using such a long and thin end mill for such a large cut is clearly way too ambitious and I got an enormous amount of chatter and an awful finish 
The other issue being, given my shallow depth of cut, is that I'm going to be here forever. So I change approach and clamp the rod directly onto the table and use a big chunky end mill to remove the excess. First I finish off the end of this rod. To do so I first touched off the end mill against the machine surface, set the DRO to zero and use the end mill to bring myself down to the same point. There is a slight join, but nothing that won't come out with a bit of filing and emery cloth. With the first side completed I flip the rod and using a bit of 3.2mm plate I can ensure it's sitting level on the table and carry on with the cutting. With this approach I'm able to take off around about half a mil per pass which makes it significantly quicker than using the approach with the jig. As I did before I still need to reposition one of the clamps so that I can get to this end of the rod. I don't have to touch off this time because I did reset the DRO to zero on the final cut for the main body. The downside with this approach is that I don't get the nice radius at the end, but that's easily fixed by using the round nose end mill. First I touch off against the finished face, and then I take multiple small cuts. As is normally the case for me with these cosmetic features, I am doing this by eye. So I'm working to a scribe line on top of the rod that we can't see from this angle. After a bit of work with some files and memory cloth, the rods are now beginning to look quite good. I still need to put a bit more effort in them to get rid of all the machining marks. But before I do that, there are a couple more operations that need to be completed. I'm into the final operations now for these front rods. First I need to remove some material from the oil pots at the very front. This is to stop them from fouling with the wheel treads and to do so I clamp the rods back onto the rotary table, centre it under the quill and use an end mill to bring it down to size. Next I need to reduce the thickness of the section that fits in the knuckle joint at the rear of the rods. Don's design is quite simple and I go with something slightly different so rather than just a straight cut across I cut a radius just because I think it looks a bit nicer. And finally I cut the recess for the cap on the leading crank pin. With these last three operations done, it's just a bit more time now with some memory and some files to really tidy these up and make them look good. I do still need to turn the bushes and fit those to the coupling rods and then drill through for the oil ways. And I'll cover all of that off in the next video, along with the installation, at which point I can check that A, I've quartered the wheels correctly, and B, I've machined these to the right length. Until then, and as always, thanks for watching.